for the record today is January 18, 2022. Um, here participating this evening uh, in person, I have a um, Board of Finance member of the High School um, and Board of Finance member of Mr. Corbeus. Participating in the Zoom, I have Board of Finance member of Christopher Anderson um, and before we begin, we need to be peaceful all right so we will jump right in uh, item number one so we'll entertain a motion to open the uh, meeting to the public so, thank you. So, we have a motion made by uh, Mr. Bay, seconded by Ms. Presley. Uh, questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Um, and other than Mr. Oliver, anything to add this evening? <laughs> Just hello. Happy New Year, everybody. All right, we'll move right into item two. I'll take this in um, three. Um, bites. Uh, our first entity in motion to accept the meeting minutes for September 21st, 2021. So, moved. Mr. Second, Mr. Bates. comments on those minutes. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item 2B, I'll entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from November 16th, 2021. So moved. Mr. Price. Second. Second, Mr. Forty. Are there questions or comments on those minutes? Hearing none, I'll call a motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any extensions? Motion carries. Item 2C, I'll entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from December 20th, 2021. Second. 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 Those minutes are not here, right? No. It's what they don't want to do. They're on the same So, um, we need to do the same thing. So, we have to do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I, I think we're going to have to do that. Um, and I could probably have the council. When they do their uh, approval, I'll have their approval to the board of finances approval as well. That is a, a good record. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, moving on to item three, I will entertain a motion to authorize the use of up to $25,000 from our contingency fund for the repair or replacement of the traffic box that was damaged at the intersection of Church Street and Midget Avenue. This, of course, is pending the city council approval. So moved, Anderson. Yes, and Mr. Anderson, thank you. Um, questions on this motion? What happened to the box? Yeah. So apparently, um, this box, um, I mean, never notice these boxes until one gets damaged. Um, this box sits right there um, on the inside of the sidewalk on the corner. Uh, it is clear from the tire tracks through snow um, and over the sidewalks that a truck clipped the box and just about found it over. The police department has initiated an investigation. Um, they're hoping that you know, some of the evidence uh, left behind will uh, bring them to the um, party that created the um, or caused the damage. Um, but until such time as they can complete that investigation, the traffic box has to be repaired. Uh, 
the signal light there, and that's a, that's an important signal light. So we're in the intersection of Church Street, Riverside Avenue, and, and uh, Midtown Avenue all um, intersect. Um, it is functioning right now, but when you drive by, you'll see that it's just wrapped in truck. So our traffic division really needs to get moving on this. Uh, we also put a claim into our own insurance company um, to see if there is insurance coverage on that. Uh, the question that we have is the deductible because our deductible is 25,000. So we're going to try to see what we can do. Hence the reasons for up to $25,000 and we report back to the boards uh, what the final determination is. Other questions or comments on the motion? Is there a way that we can stipulate that if the police does somehow find the responsible party that the payment will be transferred from the city to that that person? Oh, yes. Yeah, so the motion could be um, authorized uh, for the use of up to $25,000 from the agency for the repair or replacement. Um, with a stipulation that any recovery of funds for uh, through the insurance companies would uh, be restored to a contingency. Thank you. All right, so um, that motion was made by Mr. Leas. You will amend your motion accordingly? Yes, so I did. And Mr. Anderson, you will amend your second? Okay, great. Yes, that sounds fine. Okay, if there are no other questions or thoughts. Upon the motion, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item four, I'll entertain a motion to use for the use of $7,729.26 of contingency funds to repair the VHF antenna at University Drive cell tower as shown on the attached Marcus Communications invoice to the city council approval. So moved. Second. Mr. Pesky, seconded by Mr. Reyes. Uh, and uh, questions. And I'll just give a brief explanation. So, this cell tower uh, is actually owned by the city of Torrington. Uh, this was part of the uh, real estate transaction between the University of Connecticut, uh, Five Points Art Center, and the city of Torrington. Uh, right now, um, the uh, revenue that comes from the cell tower is being used to pay the University of Connecticut for our portion of the purchase price. Our police department does have um, antenna and cell um, access, cell tower access. Um, and the repairs that they have been doing to uh, some of the um, broken equipment out there further reveal that this antenna also needs to be replaced with there and the police department is um, tapped out on their um, funds in their operating budget to do so. If there are any questions, comments, here well, we go. Just, uh, just a question, I guess. With um, So the, the $7,729.26, that will repair it. Is there any ongoing maintenance or any other fees that are going to be required? Is there a security system or anything like that that will be required on top of the, the 77? So uh, it is my understanding that that is, um, that is the entire cost for the, I'm sorry, I'm trying to locate the memo that was attached for the invoice. Um, so that was for the replacement of the uh, antenna uh, and related antenna connectors. So that brings in new equipment um, for the, um, the police use. Uh, I'm not sure about the warranty on any of that, but I do believe that um, is the complete anticipated expense. So it, it does the does the police or the fire department have a, have some kind of a fund for maintaining this equipment in the future? It's just outside of this particular motion or outside of this particular repair? Yes. So uh, they do have an annual 
um, line item that they do budget for repairs of this nature. But uh, again, what happened is um, there had been some work that was being done. Uh, they were up there on November 4th to repair the microwave. Uh, once that was repaired, they tested the systems at the site to ensure that everything was operating correctly. And then that's when they discovered the problem with the um, antenna. Uh, and this last invoice for this last little bit of repair um, went above and uh, beyond what they had budgeted for repairs at that site for this year. Okay. Other questions? Now, I'll call this motion all in favor. Any opposed? Right, motion carries. Item five, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the fiscal year 21 22 budget modifications as described in the comptroller's memo dated January 3rd, 2022. Um, this has already been approved by the city council on January 3rd, 2022. Very much. Second. Second, Anderson. So the floor is open for uh, questions. I know there were quite a few more items um, on this memo. So I think we, we discussed, we did. So um, we had this on the council, or excuse me, board finance agenda. I want to say it was in November or December, and we had to vote because the council hadn't uh, taken action. Oh, okay. And I think we did this in June. No. Yes. I, I remember reading this and asking questions. About yes. Yeah. Um, it's just I mean, yes. Um. The city real estate was watching. All right, so I asked Ray if he would uh, be available to answer questions in anticipation of that being the lion's share of these cuts. So, Ray, do you want to walk us through those cuts and <coughs> what the impact is? Yeah. <laughs> So the cuts for city real estate um, that were recommended um, was so five thousand dollars was cut out of the O and M expenses for building maintenance. Um, looking at that from the uh, a historical perspective, um, we thought we could afford that. Um, and so far, we, we've been um, we've been able to, to function right now. Our expenses are below the, the twenty thousand. <coughs> the uh, the next one was a cut of thirty nine thousand <coughs> was a cut to the requested roof replacement fund. Um, we had originally requested three hundred thousand. Um, first round we cut hundred, um, and then. Cut another um, forty thousand or sixty thousand. Uh, got another forty thousand. Um, so leaving from the original request one hundred sixty thousand for the roof replacement. Um, and then the next one was a cut to the sidewalk repairs, uh, capital improvement um, projects. Um, original request was one hundred seventy-five thousand. Cut twenty five thousand. Um, well, actually, that one was zero up, so we would cut one hundred and seven total through the process. The total requested was only seventy five. We cut one seventy five thousand. Um, most of the repair. That sounds. Did you take all the money on the final? Or yes. So as as we're as we're doing the projects, um, the sidewalk repairs are being incorporated. Um, into our bonded projects. So we thought we, we could absorb that cost. Um, the next, uh, 
see the 25,000. That was um, so over the last two years, um, we've been requesting money to be set aside for uh, a evaluation of a potential uh, public safety complex. Um, uh, so what we've done, what we've accomplished this year is we just recently signed a contract with a, a firm to do our facility condition assessments. So understanding, yes, uh, we think that, you know, a comprehensive uh, public safety complex is potentially warranted, but not having a solid baseline of what repairs and costs are necessary to uh, the police department, the North End Fire Station, and then the headquarters. Um, <clears throat> we thought that that could just be put off for just another year. So we had some more comprehensive data. So we did sign a contract with the firm to begin those facility condition assessments. And those three facilities will be our first priority of the facilities to evaluate. <clears throat> In that process, we'll evaluate uh, you know, the, the site, the roofs, the windows, the, all the mechanicals, electrical, plumbing, uh, mechanical. So basically, and then from that, we would then have a, a uh, an evaluation and a budgetary number as to what it would cost us to either rehabilitate that building um, to, to bring it up to not only its code, but to make it more sustainable. Um, so we thought we, we could put that off and um, until we had that baseline. The, the next one was 170,000. That was for the fire department headquarters. Same scenario, um, as mentioned, the facility condition assessments um, that were undertaking that building is the priority. Um, so we feel that we could afford delaying that request at least another year until that facility condition assessment is completed. And the next one is the same fifty thousand dollars for the North End Fire Station. And the next one, uh, the same two hundred thirty-five thousand for the police department. <clears throat> and then uh, the last line. Was four hundred fifty thousand dollars that was cut for the animal control facility. Um, as you all know, we, we've been struggling to uh, <clears throat> secure the. We had requested seven hundred fifty thousand. Um, so we've been struggling to, to secure the funding necessary to get that project uh, off the ground. Um, we think we, we we have a plan in place. Um, so we think we have a plan in place. For, so. From fiscal year 2021, we were able to make up the surpluses that were transferred to facilities, capital reserve. So we have um, the money in capital reserve to absorb the $450,000 cost from the 2122 um, my last conversation with Congresswoman um, Hayes and Senator Bloomingdale um, was not um, not promising. It was right before the holidays, um, and uh, this is one of those uh, grants that somehow embedded in appropriations and uh, you know, their full budget adoption process. Uh, they didn't say that it was no longer a possibility. They just could not give you a timeline as to when that might happen. Um, as you heard Ray mention, um, we do think we may have a path forward on animal control. The um, final rule was issued by the U.S. Treasury on, um, on the American Rescue Plan funds, and specifically as it relates to um, lost revenue, which we've been through a thousand times, you know, no matter how many times we uh, did the math, we couldn't come up with lost revenue. This was not, you know, wasn't just the city of Toronto, it was across the nation of Melbourne. So uh, the U.S. Treasury has uh, given some relief and an option to adapt a standard allowance. It's kind of like that, um, 
deduction, the standard deduction you're allowed in your tax returns. So a standard allowance for lost revenue. And if we adopt that standard allowance, that should free up some of those funds that we could we dedicate to getting an animal control facility done. You may recall during the entire budget, budget process last year, we kept saying, you know, the pay to go projects, you know, those those uh, building projects or infrastructure projects that are cash, um, you know, cash uh, completed or part of the operating budget completed would qualify. So based on that conversation, I think we're in a good position to advance that project information. You know, none of these, uh, I, I look at Ray as I say this, I look at Robin as I say this, none of these cuts were easy. They're all difficult. Um, so much of the work that, um, that Ray was trying to accomplish in the budget last year was to start building up those reserves so that we are in a better position to um, take care of our um, facilities. Um, but uh, the logical first step is doing that conditions assessment and feasibility study on the public safety complex. So um, good plans uh, make for uh, good construction projects. So for that reason, I'm, um, I'm not reluctant to endorse his recommendations. Does anybody else have any questions for Brian? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, the big uh, home placement part of Will we still be able to do what we need to do? So, yes, another cut that I'm never happy to make. Um, but we did a complete analysis of where we are, what we have by way of um, reserves, and what purchases are queued up for the next two years. And based on what we have on reserve, coupled with the uh, balance in this budget that could be um, deposited into the reserves, uh, we would be okay with the purchases for the next two years. But this is one of those main items that we will not be able to cut this year. Because I mean with the cost of any vehicle of any kind of absolutely not concerned. Absolutely. And it being somewhat difficult to purchase vehicles right now. You know, I mean so much of the outcome of the pandemic is, you know, supply chain and computer chips and, uh, you know, workforce. So uh, there's a lot to be discussed at the vehicle replacement level um, over the next few months before that that uh, claim gets revised and put before, before the city council again. But uh, yeah, you're right. We do have concerns. But based on the need and the resources available, we should be good for the next two years. And I guess seeing as I, this was the first money from contingency that we put in this this one. Yeah, one other thing is the funny for uh, the uh youth service bureau, right? Yeah. No. This last year. That was last year. Okay. So my, my point was that we have to use very much of it to mm -hmm. to to take certain jobs and I think timing is everything, you know. Obviously, the most volatile line item um, in the city is usually storm management. It's solved, it's overtime for um files. So I'm always reluctant to come to the boards at this time of the year to ask for those contingency funds. But I think that we're okay where we are. Um, and that this, even if we use these 30,000, again, our first goal is to get those insurance companies, those insurance funds in, and hopefully we don't even need um, the 25 or all of the 25. Um, but yes, based on that, we should be fine. You're I think, did you also want to go over the pension? I know that you had mentioned the pension numbers or something that you were um, always, always, well, it just, thank you. 
it, it doesn't, it concerns me when we talk about the whole country. You know, the um, I, I'm 100% familiar with you on that one. Um, I always feel like the pension is um, all is, is that one liability that a municipality has that can put you into vacancy. You know, the demand for pension. Um, pensions have been a priority for me. Um, these cuts this year are not a reduction in a contribution that we make the annual required contribution or recommended contribution. Um, what I was trying to do this year was um, based on uh, Steve Romanski from Hooker Holcomb's uh, report to us regarding the assumptions on the return of our investments. You know, it was a recommendation that perhaps instead of a 7% return, you know, we might want to start planning for a 6.5% return on investments. So uh, Alice worked out these numbers and said if we were to reduce the assumption and assume we're going to have a smaller return on the investment, that um, these are the funds that we would need to build up the reserves faster. Um, but these cuts in this line item um, do not reflect a reduction in what we have been doing uh, by way of contributions annually. And I greatly appreciate that's the commitment that you have to pensions because. Um, it's not only important to uh, keep the promises that we've made to secure um, our taxpayers' liability in this, but also um, it does influence in a bond rating. And as we're about to go into more bonds, we want to make sure that we're going to use strong. Um, all of those thoughts went through our uh, decision making process. Other questions on the proposed price? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Right. Then I will move into uh, item six. I will entertain a motion to consider business by departments. So, Mr. Bates. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? I'll go to Robin first. Is there anything you want to say? Yeah. Oh. Robin and I have already started diving into the um, budgets. And um, if we look a little shell shocked, <laughs> that's how it starts. It always starts that way. <laughs> anything this evening, Robin? Nothing there. Thank you. Um, Ingrid's filling in today for. Um, a limping clerk's department. Um, I see Carol Anderson is out of our home quarantine. Um, and um, the, our assistant city clerk, Heather, is also out of Carol. So, this is a total report for us today. Thank you. Um, all right, I'm moving to item seven. I want to do a motion uh, to consider business by mayor and members. So, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Second by Mr. Morton. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, starting to the screen. Anything this evening, Mr. Morton? Um, the only thing that I've got on my mind, really, outside of just the, the, the budget area, is kind of last year at this time, it seemed like Torrington was a hot spot for people migrating here from New York. Has um, has the real estate market slowed down at all, or are we still receiving a lot of uh, interest from out of state to relocate to our our lovely little corner? The um, information that I get, and I do check in with um, our local realtors. Um, I, I need to make that call more recently. December slowed down considerably, as it usually does with the holiday. Um, there's very little inventory out there. We're still finding that houses are put on the market and there's bidding wars. Um, so I, I do believe that that is still the case. Um, but what we have noticed is that the trend is for local people that are um, selling and buying within the community. So fewer new people and more, um, more uh, Selling my first home, looking for my final home. 
Okay. And a lot of young people moving into the market, which I found to be very encouraging. Um, so uh, it's uh, another report that I think might be worth bringing to the board of finance. Maybe we'll let one of our realtors from NLS want to just talk a little bit about what they've seen and what they're seeing now. Yeah, the, just the, the reason I ask is obviously, you know, the, the labor market right now across the, the country is, um, call it unique at best. Um, and most of our manufacturers and most of our businesses are, are kind of starving for people. So just seeing if the, the real estate migration was was following just to, to see where we are with attracting and retaining that, that workforce that we've talked about for several years. So it is positive to hear that the real estate market is staying pretty hot. Um, you know, just uh, I guess if the inventory is low, it means that people are investing in our area, which obviously leads to the grand list and a bunch of other positive things for the for the town. One of the other remarkable things in the um, transactions that were happening is uh, outside investor. They're not necessarily buying in Torrington and moving to Torrington. We're finding a lot of investors, and quite honestly, a number of those investors will pick up two or three or four multi-family homes um, or larger pieces of property that they uh, intend to develop. And I've had several, many meetings with those kinds of purchasers. Um, so it's always that mixed blessing. You want to make sure that the people that are buying in Torrington are really truly invested in Torrington. I prefer to see these houses purchased by somebody who's moving here and living here and being a contributing member, uh, you know, bringing in some of that workforce that our um, manufacturers are so desperate for. Um, so uh, it is um, a mixed absentee, you know, and not just out of town, out of state. Torrington is a very attractive real estate market, um, real estate, and um, price-wise. So it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next few months. And of course, you know, as long as the interest rates are down, uh, that market is going to continue to be um, very attractive. Thank you. But I do appreciate you bringing that up, and, and I might reach out to some of our resources. Joanne Dunning is one of them who always gives me all of the statistics that she has, um, and we could certainly um, see if there's something that they put together for a presentation to the, to the board. All right, Mr. Anderson, anything to say? Nothing, nothing forward. Thank you. Mr. Husky? Uh, any word on the site going forward? So, yes, we have um, uh, Linda Ford from our um, public works director's office. Do you want to talk a little bit about, brag a little bit about the work that Linda's been doing? Do you ever know what we're going to Yes, so um, to answer your question, um, so Linda Ford from our engineering department was uh, promoted to MSW Recycling Coordinator. Um, I actually did tell her to reach out to you um, to kind of put the group and pull, kind of pull together um, members of the community and um, interested parties that to kind of brainstorm over, you know, one, you know, evaluating the, the crisis that we're in, as well as, um, you know, what the future holds for us. One of the things we are looking at doing, we did apply for a grant to start looking at um, organic recycling, um, <clears throat> to see if we can do a pilot for a or, kind of organic recycling program. Um, organics make up, you know, between 25 to 30% of the, the weight of our MSW. So, um, that in itself, we could uh, implement a successful organic recycling program that would have a, you know, a significant impact. Um, kind of reach out to, uh, you've got some great ideas for, you know, uh, reaching out to the, the schools, um, the children's, uh, educating our, uh, you know, some education programs, uh, labeling our recycling containers to, you know, get people that better have a better understanding of what you know goes in the bin versus what goes out of the bin. Um, I'm also looking at you know the cost of our bulk waste, um, you know, how, how we can look at uh, you know reducing that cost and uh, 
you know, potentially uh, streamlining services. Um, so those are some of the things that, that she is um, starting to implement. Um, so I, I think it, it's it's been a long time coming. I think we've needed it for a long time. Um, and uh, you know, thanks to the board of finance and, and the city council for funding the position. Um, so I think she's got some fantastic ideas. Um, she is really charged up. Um, she reached out to uh, you know a couple um, you know uh, twenty two residents that are, are you know on the same stuff you know have the same stuff uh, same you know is we have to do something. Um, we have to increase our recycling rate. Our typically, our recycling rate year over year is up twenty percent, and which is you know on it's is very unrealistic. We don't cover really much more than twenty percent of it for years. Um, we really need to, to look at you know the education side of it, reaching out to the schools. Um, you know, as she said, if I can get to the children, convince the children, then the children will get to the parents. <laughs> Um, so she, she has some really some great ideas. Uh, I think it was a great um, move for us, um, and it did believe it will provide us some really long-term sustainability in how we handle trash and recycling and bulk waste and you know our transfer station. And so, um, so that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Oh, a conversation right I have every week. Yes, um, I think I said to the council when we spoke about um, waste, bulky waste, you know, the state has acknowledged that they are in a uh, solid waste crisis. And um, we have been working uh, fairly closely with DEEP, you know, and uh, I think the city of Franklin has already proven that we're not bashful about stepping up. To, um, to take a lead in what we can do to um, be better at recycling, at, uh, at uh, uh, packaging, you know, and uh, you know, all of those um, strategies that are sort of dancing around how to reduce waste. So um, a lot of work ahead of us still, yes. and Mirror is Absolutely, they they were waiting for some correspondence from them uh, regarding opt out clauses and and the, the future amendment to our existing contract, where our existing contract with Mira expires on June 30th of 2027. No, June 2020, fiscal year 27 is the last year. We have five years left on the contract. Um, they are requesting an amendment to the opt out clause. Um, so, you know, basically, um. What we're looking at is a projection over the next five years of an increase of about 40, we're at 105,000 ton now. Um, of an increase of about 45,000 a ton over the next five years. And on average, year over year, when since COVID, we've been seeing that increase. Um, we're over 14,000 tons a year. And you know we've we've had you know many violations where recycling has been contaminated with um, with with trash, um, and then that you know if twenty you know say twenty five percent of it was trash, the entire thing gets as trash because um, it was contaminated. The recycling was really contaminated. So that that kind of leads back to the education. You know, I mean. Um, so, um, a wishful recycle. Yep. Yes. So, and just just some quick math: um, a forty dollar per ton increase on fourteen thousand is half a million dollars. You know, so, anything we can do to mitigate uh, the amount of um, waste we're sending to Mira or to whatever landfill. Is ultimately um, designated when the area is closed down, um, is obviously going to have a significant impact on it. That's a question. Um, we are going to have the concept of the census back back explained to you. Um, 
Oh, oh, economic development. Yes, and I apologize. Um, so when you're talking about the Ellen census tract, you're talking about the socioeconomic um, census tract. Yes, it seems to determine so many things. Yes. Whether where we would be or where we can't be or whether we're relatively or not. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate the understanding of that. Absolutely. Yeah, and I do apologize. Um, I did not. Um, I did not get a chance to um, put together the rest of that um, presentation with RISTA. Um, just a high level, there are three of the qualified census tracts in the city of Torrington. And one of our qualified census tracts um, is actually, um, it, it, all three of them are downtown, but one of them in particular, the lowest, um, is one of the lowest um, in the state. Um, and that's an area where um, we are now funding a redevelopment plan um, for redevelopment of railroads for there. You know, so that's our local retina school and that yeah. So yes, um, I will. Now, that makes that, that explains it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I'm sorry, yeah, one of the lowest in the state. Yeah, one of those, you know, when you're looking for the points against your grants, you know, those are one of the things that get you more points. You know, you're, you're redeveloping and improving um, property within this low census tract. Um, so it's an investment the state and the federal government are usually um, more open to when they recognize who, who it benefits. So um, because that uh, grant application, which we learned about, at the end of October, we literally had 65 days to pull it together, sort of sidelined a lot of this other information that, um, that we've had queued up. So I'll, now that that uh, great application was filed on Friday, we'll get right back to the business setting and concept. And should we uh, expect an update on the yes. yes. So um, as you heard me say, it was uh, a week ago Friday that the U.S. Treasury's final rule came out, um, 437 pages. Um, you know, as soon as I got it, uh, two things that I did immediately, I did a word search for radios. Um, this goes back to our VHF antenna repair. Um, in the original proposal that was put before the council and the um, boards in October, we were looking at um, replacement of the radio systems in the city um, of Torrington, uh, joining up the state's radio system, uh, including our schools, our department, police departments, uh, street departments, uh, Torrington Area Health, you know, making sure that we're all in the same system. And that was a $3 million price tag. Um, of course, the word search brought me right to page 61, and it said, yes, radios qualify. Um, so then after I was satisfied that was the case, I went back to the beginning of the document and on page five learned about this standard allowance that the U.S. Treasury is allowing municipalities to adapt. And this is how much is that standard $10 million. $10 million. Uh, and our appropriation was $10,005,000. Dollars, you know, it's uh, it's essentially all of the appropriation that we have been that we can now pull in. Um, and again, when I reflect on all of our conversations during the budget last year, we kept like identifying what are those um, what are those uh, investments that we could move into this those one-time expenses like the animal control facility, like the radios, which. Chief Tower was actually trying to save forty thousand dollars a year against that three million dollar price tag. So, um, so those are two projects that um, that I would say um, the the radio system is not new, the animal control facility is new, but I also am uh, committed to um, sticking to the true intent of that legislation, um, and that is to try to get these funds. Uh, into the hands of people that can um, develop programs or infrastructure improvements that would mitigate the uh, pandemic um, and those um, businesses and business sectors and not for profits that suffered the most um, at the, at negative 
I had a negative economic impact during the pandemic. So not a whole lot has changed with what was presented in October, but now with the final rule, we're in a better position to say, these are what we're going to do. We're more comfortable now that we can do them based on the final rule. And I'm going to start uh, a public process that we're going to, um, obviously our city council, um, our board of finance, and we'll, we'll try to do a couple of public forums. Absolutely. Right. Uh, I'm just reminding everybody to uh, vote on the 25th the referendum. Um, other than that, uh, thank you. All right. All right, just answering your questions, um, pretty much um, hit all the items that were on my list. Um, so there being no further business before the board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved, Anderson. And second, Mr. Anderson, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Me. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. So, <laughs> 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 <laughs>